Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mama, we're home. You'll stop shouting, you'll wake up the dead. Mama, did you hear us? We're home. I heard you. What do you want me to say? Say hooray. Your daughter wants a herald to announce her arrival, Mrs. Brown. With a trumpet and a red carpet. Well, close the door. What's the matter with your closing the door? My arms are full of packages. That's what's the matter with me closing the door. Oh, so they are. Mm. Hey, David, don't go in the living room. You go right upstairs with all that stuff. It belongs upstairs. Well, I'm going into the living room. Whether the stuff belongs here or upstairs, I can't walk another step without dropping something. Good heavens, David. What do you have there? Packages. So I see. One, two, three, four. Eleven. No wonder you're so late. Thought you got lost or had a flat tire or something. Hello, Mama. What time is it? Half past nine. Already? My, it doesn't seem possible. Feels like midnight to me. Eleven separate packages. What did you do? Buy out the whole town of Eastbrook? Of course not. All I needed was a toothbrush. And I didn't really need that except as an excuse to go out. Your daughter, Mrs. Brown, will be the end of me. I shouldn't be surprised. She's almost been the end of me on a number of occasions. You see these 11 packages, each wrapped individually? We had more fun, Mama. Hush up. I'm listening to David. My own mother. Go on, David. I've cleared the floor for you. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Now, these 11 packages, Mrs. Brown, each wrapped individually, are Claudia's purchases. Her idea of an evening's entertainment. It was your fault, David. My fault? You're the one who discovered the cut-rate drugstore. The plot thickens. I didn't discover it. You did. You were driving the car right down that block. You're not even supposed to drive yet. I have half a mind to call what up Dr. Cut cut-rate drugstore? I didn't even know there was one in the village. Did you? I'm sorry you found out. What cut-rate drugstore? The one where we bought all this stuff, of course. Instead of only a toothbrush. Where? In Eastbrook, of course. You didn't think we'd go gallivanting all around the state of Connecticut for just a toothbrush, did you, Mama? Rescue me, David. Well, Mama, you know where the little library is? And there's a little road that goes off to the left there beyond it? Yes. Now, that road takes you to the farmer's market. Yes. Well, that's not the road you take. Oh, dear, you too. Now, but the next little road that goes off to the right... Yes. ...goes on past Sunflower Nursery. Yes. You don't take that one either. You don't? No. You take the next one on the right. You drive down it and past the gas station and past the soda shop and past the shoemaker. And there it is. Right there. The cut-rate drugstore. I never saw it. I didn't know it existed. I lost my head. I'm glad you said a head, not mind. What are you doing going down that little street that turns off the right beyond the little street that turns to the left beyond the town library? We were driving. David was, in spite of he shouldn't. And then my explorer's blood started boiling. There was the street, and there was I. Mm. It was inevitable I should drive down it. Yeah. It was as if it had burst out of a pumpkin, like a, a Walt Disney cartoon, just for us. Mm, the little street that wasn't there. David, do you think it'll be there if we look tomorrow? No, I'm not going to look tomorrow. I'm never going to look again. I've been burnt once. Where's my pipe? Speaking of being burnt... Now, if anybody's going to put my pipe someplace where I can't... Why does somebody have to always move my pipe around as if it's... It's on the mantel, dear. No. So it is. Well, she has me so bewildered, Mama, I can't find the nose on my face. And there it is. Right between your eyes and over your mouth, in the middle of your face. Go away. Bring me up to date. What happened? What happened, Mama? What are all these 11 packages? Drugs from the cut-rate drugstore, of course. It's open all night until one o'clock. A useless piece of information. Your daughter, Mrs. Brown, dragged me out of this house an hour ago, ostensibly to buy a toothbrush. Pretty flimsy excuse. Yeah, so I thought. It's a crime that in this day and age, a girl has to even think up an excuse to get a husband to go driving with her neath the moonlit sky. I knew that toothbrush was an excuse all along, or else I wouldn't have consented in the first place. You did? I certainly did. Then you just went because you wanted to. I certainly did. Sweet. Then why did you insist that we go to the drugstore? To catch you with your own tricks, young woman. But my plot boomerang. So I see. 
We had no sooner stepped into that drugstore, Mother, than I knew the trick was on me and the jig was up. Sit down, Claudia. Let David talk. Mm. I don't think you two were in a cut-rate drugstore at all. I think you were in a tavern having something to drink. Say, that's an idea I feel just like a glass of milk. I had to go and open my mouth. <clears throat> As I was saying, Mrs. Brown, your daughter found heaven. Cut rate. It was heaven. Everything in that drugstore was reduced. Toothpaste that sells for 25 cents was selling for 17. Yeah. And cold cream, 27 cents, two for 41. There you you have enough toothpaste in this house to last you till next year. I know, but I couldn't resist. It was a bargain. I could easily spend a fortune in that drugstore. No, you did. You spent a dollar and 29 cents. Did I spend that much? You certainly did. Well, it was worth three times that. Hmm. Mom, I'll have to take you there sometime. You'll have a gorgeous time. Yes, but why each bundle wrapped individually? Because I bought each one individually. Uh, can't you imagine the picture, Mother? Now, she saw a bar of soap, seven cents. She told the man behind the counter... He looked like a tax collector. Oh, so he did. Where was I? The bar of soap. Oh, yeah. For seven cents only, it was six, reduced in twelve. Quiet. Now, Claudia decided to buy a bar of soap. That was the first step. You make mm -hmm. it sound so exciting. She told the man behind the counter... He wore glasses, a little bit bald, just a little beginning in the middle. Mm -hmm. Claudia told the man behind the counter to wrap it up, please. David, give the man six cents, which I did. And he wrapped up the package. Whereupon, I took Claudia by the arm and I said, Young woman, we're going home. But on the way... Her eye was caught by a sign which read, Cold cream, 27 cents, selling two for 41. So she told the man behind the counter... He was wearing a gray suit and no tie. Uh, she told the man behind the counter, wrap it up. David, give the nice man 41 cents. Eleven times the nice man wrapped up things, and eleven times I paid the nice man. But never again. I shall never be lured out of this house with the pretext of purchasing one toothbrush, which we never bought. Well, they weren't reduced. Mm, this is too much. I'm going to bed. I always think I've learned my lesson, David, but I guess I'm too old to learn. That's a fine way to talk for a spring chicken. Spring chicken or no, I'm going to bed. So am I, David. All right, I know when I'm licked. I'll go to bed, too. You must be tired. No, not so tired as worn out. But I have to get up early in the morning, so... I might as well go to bed. I know I won't be given any peace until I do. He's so flattering, Mama. Good night. See you at breakfast. I'm right behind you. David! Aren't you going to carry up all these packages? I am not. They're yours. I can't carry 11 packages. Well, I did. Well, you're bigger than I am. I'm not supposed to carry things. I broke a collarbone a month ago, remember? Ah, now you remember. Uh, you're just lucky I didn't remember sooner. All right, I'll show you. I'll carry them myself. Chivalry is dead. It's hard to believe that men ever treated women as if they were the weaker sex, which they aren't, of course. Can't afford to be the way they're treated. Oh! Having uh, trouble? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> you think you're so smart. All right, I'll, uh, I'll give you a hand. I don't need your help. Not much, you don't. Here, hold out your arm. Suppose I'm going to have to be indebted to you for this for the rest of my life. You will. There. Then I will carry them myself. Uh, stand still. Don't talk so much. Big bully. Now. There. That's all of them. Now, march. I'll put out the lights behind you. You're a big help. Well, do you want to put out the lights by yourself? I didn't say anything. Careful you, uh, you don't trip on the stairs. Making a woman carry her own bundles. You think we were in the middle of China. I'll, uh, I'll turn out the, turn on the light in the bedroom for you. Don't strain yourself. Oh, I, I won't. I won't forget this very quickly. I hope you won't. Ah, there we are. Now, give me the packages. Yeah. There. Gladly. Yeah. Now, I'll put all this stuff in the bathroom cabinet. No, I think we need an extra blanket tonight. Well, if ever there was an evening wasted, this was it. How can you say that when we save so much money? Just how do you figure we save money? Simple. Uh, we only spent a dollar twenty-nine, right? Yeah. And the stuff we bought was worth at least three dollars. Only two dollars. Please, 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 don't exaggerate. All right, all right, only two. We still save money. <laughs> 
How you women can always get yourself to figure that way, I'll, I'll never know. You think you save money when you've bought something that you don't need because it happens to be reduced. Well, we we might need some of this stuff someday. Well, someday you might need the moon, mm. too. I think we'll need this stuff sooner than that. They're very good things to have handy. Yes, mm. gauze, adhesive tape, witch hazel. Iodine, you never know when you're going to need that. Mm. Sheer rationalization. But if you had a good time, darling, it was worth it and lots more. I wonder who that is. Claudia, are you still up? Come on in, Mother. Sorry to disturb you. You're not. Disturbing us, he means. I seem to have cut my finger. Where is a bad shot to me? Get away from me. It's just a little cut. Mama, how'd you do it? Does it hurt? Hey, it's bleeding blood. Of course it's bleeding blood. It's cut, I said. Oh, dear. I haven't got turnip juice in my veins. This is no time for jokes. Claudia, shut up. I show it to me, Mother. It's nothing, David. Just a scratch on my finger. Mm-hmm. How'd you do it, Mama? Mm-hmm. I chipped a glass, if you must know. Clumsy. I admit it. Very clumsy. Now, David, what are, what are you looking so serious about? Now, here, let me wipe it off a little bit. All right. Yeah. Oh, there we are. It's Easy. just a slight cut, Mother. Doesn't seem to be any glass in it. I didn't need you to tell me that. Then why'd you come in here? Some adhesive tape and gauze, if you please. Adhesive tape and gauze, did you say? You have some? Have some. Mama, they are just waiting for you. <laughs> That's good. And how very, very thoughtful of you, Mrs. Brown, to go and cut your finger just when Claudia gets her adhesive tape and gauze. David, isn't it wonderful? I must be psychic. Yes, I must be. We can use all these things I just bought. When lunchtime comes, do you make it a habit to snatch a hasty bite from the icebox? That, as you know, is not a good idea. Instead, take the time to sit down quietly for a half hour and include a bottle of ice-cold Coca-Cola with your meal. Your afternoon will go better after you lunch refreshed. Uh, Mrs. Brown, could I ask you something? Yes, Mr. King. Uh, about that finger of yours oh, there. Oh, yes. Um, tell me, Mrs. Brown, uh, did you cut it on purpose? What do you think? Well, you know, I know you pretty well after all these months. Uh, I wouldn't put it past you. Oh, that's a compliment. You're not going to tell me, are you? No, I don't think I am. No, I'm very hurt. Don't be, but look at this bandage. Don't you think David's talented as a doctor? I find he's talented at just about everything, and so is Claudia. <laughs> what a talented family. Oh, wonderful. That's uh, as professional a bandage as I've even seen Dr. Barry himself put on. Oh. Oh, that reminds me. He's visiting us tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. He's a wonderful old guy. Isn't he? With such a wonderful philosophy of life. Well, it's time for bed. Good night, Joe. Good night, Mrs. Brown. Uh, Take care of that finger. Well, as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.